You know, really, the past, the present, and the future is just one big cycle. I believe, as most Buddhists and Hindus believe, that it's us coming back, you know. Look out, kid, it's something you did, God knows when, but you're doing it again. It was almost as if my dad had the whole thing mapped out and we were just these lab rats trying to find our way through the maze that hadn't quite been finished yet. Trying not to leave any footprints of us or any trace of Jeff or me. That was the most conscious thing that we did was to try and not impose on the album in any way and make a kind of, as Jeff calls it, a cradle for the voice and the guitar. To make an album, make it, make those songs all finished and, and mixed, started out really daunting because I was so used to working with George so closely until I realised that, you know, that Danny was going to be there all the time. Once we got into it, like after a couple of tunes, George sort of was with us, really. What we wanted really was kind of like demo form of music, but they deserved more than that because they were great songs as far as I was concerned. And so, sorry George, I made them a little bit posher than, than you may have wanted them, but um, I felt that I was only doing them justice. I still do it the same as we did it 30 years ago or even 40 years ago. It's still in the old school of music or, you know, in the 60s or 70s way of doing stuff. It's not high tech and it's not a rap or techno or whatever version of it. It's just acoustic guitars played by people into microphones onto tape. His time as a musician was incredible. He had fantastic time. And as a drummer, you know, I, that's something that's important and it's something that I noticed way early on. He wasn't a rusher, he wasn't a dragger, he just, he had a beautiful heartbeat. I don't want you, but I hate to lose you. You got me in between the devil and the deep. George, as a lyricist, was always honest. If he believed in something, he'd, he'd write about it. And, and if he didn't believe in something, he'd write about that too. That's really what he was like around the house all day, just playing ukulele and uh, smiling. And you know, we'd heard every Hoagy Carmichael song from Barnacle Bill the Sailor to you know, he'd sing everything on the uke. You know, he'd sing anything and everything. And uh, so that was really, you know, we had to get that in there to have because there's uke on a lot of the other tracks as well. But that was the one that really uh, just reeked of my dad. <laughs> It was probably always that yearning, you know, finding the real answer to it all. And I think he thought about that a lot, you know, what's it all about? Um, much more than, say, I do, for instance. And if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. The problem with talking is, you know, like, the more you say, the more you bury yourself in, you know, it's, it's very difficult to express what you feel in your heart. In a song though, because you have the addition of the music and the value of um, sound, that it touches places that, you know, other, play, uh, other things don't touch, and so it can stir you from a much deeper, subtle level. I try to do my music about what my experiences are. He wrote about important things, like spirituality and corruption and stuff like that. He never wrote a song that was just 
like a song, you know, like I love you and the, that's why I think you're nice. Nobody seems to listen to anything anyway no? these days, do they? All got cloth ears. Especially me. Never slept so little. My dad's favourite number was seven. And a lot of things that he did were according to the number seven, whether he meant it or not. And that was the highest honour I could have given a track on the album, was to put it track seven. That is it's my favourite, that track. I love it. Talking to myself. Sometimes he'd be up and sometimes he'd be down. I'm not making him a saint, he could be a bit grumpy now and again. This is real life, you know, trees are growing and they give oxygen to the planet. They don't take it away like, you know, traffic jams. Sometimes I just feel I'm actually on the wrong planet, you know? <laughs> and I feel great when I'm in my garden, but the yeah. moment I go out the gate, I think, what the hell am I doing here? I would like people who hear this album to actually hear how great George was. What a great singer, what a great guitar player, arranger, songwriter. I think this music has to be heard, and I'm not saying it's gonna like change your life or anything, but definitely change mine. Oh, I think he'd want to be remembered as, as a great musician and a gardener. Oh.